And he decided, the hell with a picture. I'm going to make a brand new life. So he got out there and ended up converting his beliefs into all new beliefs and immediately changed his life. And the problem is this. Unless you have amnesia, all your beliefs are still locked in there. And the problem about that is, no matter if your consciousness says this is what you want to do, if you don't get to the core belief, you'll find that your thoughts and your actions are not on the same level with each other. And that people, you'll observe people and say, I don't know why people don't like me. I'm such a nice person. Get out of here and don't bother me. I'm talking over here. Can't you see it? I'm really a nice person. I don't, get out. And the point, why? Is because they don't even see themselves saying this. Why? It's all pre-programmed. But the consciousness is concerned about the fact that they're not liked. The issue is we have to connect our understanding to our beliefs. It's our beliefs that select our genes, the beliefs that we were programmed with. So the bottom line is that the cell is like a camera. And so how does the camera work? Well, there's an image outside that is projected through the lens, and the lens takes that image and focuses it on the film. What kind of image is made on the film? A compliment. The film is always a compliment to whatever it sees. It's a positive outside, it's a negative on the inside. So the, the material inside the camera is physically a complement of what it sees outside the camera. Well, the relevance of that is the cell is exactly the same mechanism. The cell perceives the environment, the lens is the membrane, which picks up the signals and then sends the signals into the nucleus. Then the nucleus will adjust the genes, as we saw in Cairns' work, to m adjust the genes to complement the environment. So if that arrow outside the cell is an antigen, a virus, or a bacterium, then the cell will make in the inside antibodies which are locking key complements of that. Well, that's beautiful. That says then that the, the structure of the cell is locked to what the cell perceives. The bottom line is this. Your cells, what is their physiology? And the answer is, what do you see? If you open your eyes, and this is the image that greets you when you open your eyes, then what kind of structure is your cell going to make in response to that? It will complement it. This is a pathological situation. The cells will become pathological. On the other hand, you could change your belief or open your eyes and see something much more beautiful like Maxfield Parrish's ecstasy. And what the cells are going to do now, are they going to be in growth or protection when they see this picture? Growth. Well, growth is going to allow the maintenance and survival and health of the individual. Okay? But now here's we also learn this, that filters can get between the camera and the reality. And when you put filters in, you change the image by modifying it by the filter. Understandable? So the bottom line is this. Cells have filters. And the filter is what? Belief. Belief gets between the environment and the response of the cell. So the belief is a filter that takes the environment and converts it into something it can understand and then relate that to the cell so the cell can make a complement of it. Now, what I would like you to do is go to your envelope and pick out one of the filter glasses, red or green, either one, red or green, and hold it on in front of your eyes. And as you're holding it in front of your eyes, look at the screen, it's going to be red or green. Now keep, this, keep the glasses on and then tell me, is this a picture of love or fear? When you see this picture, are you living in love or are you living in fear? Love or fear? Yell it out. Love, love and fear. Okay. Are you living in love or are you living in fear? Okay now, okay, now go back. Switch the glasses with the other color. Okay, you got the other color on? Are you living in love or are you living in fear? fear. Living in love or are you living in fear? fear? Now the point is take the glasses off. Now here's the truth. This is the truth and this is how simple it is. The world has everything in it. The world has got everything in it. But you can only see what you were trained to see. Your experiences taught you filters. You put the filters on in front of your eyes and you go through your life with a belief that changes the reality into something that you were selecting out of it. If you live in fear and you walk down the street, do you think you'd be interested in the beautiful flowers out here or about that shady looking character over there in the corner? And the fact is, what are you gonna be? You're gonna be looking for things that scare you. Well, if you keep looking for things that scare you, what do you think you're going to find? Things that scare you. And the bottom line is this. The fear generates the reality because the filters only select from that what will pass through your belief filter. So let's say I believe in fear. <laughs> I'm walking down the street, right? And I trip over something. I go, oh, damn it, you know, I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road. I tripped over this thing and took my eyes off the road. I live in fear. But the guy walking behind me 
has the red glasses on. He lives in love, right? He's walking and goes, a block of gold. I live in fear. I cannot see the gold. I'm not looking for gold. I'm looking for fear. And the point about it is taking the glasses on and off is a belief transition that you can do this. You can change your life, but you've got to change the glasses you wear. We have been instilled from our inception with a Darwinian belief that life is a struggle, that survival is based on your ability to fight your way into this life. But if that's our belief, then everybody's out here fighting. And the reality is, who are we fighting? We're fighting the belief. We're not fighting anything real. And every day you hear on the news, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. The glasses get thicker and thicker and thicker. And in the process, your health is going out the window. Whether you live in love or you live in fear is totally a belief. And I can tell you this because I used to live in fear, and that thing has gone totally out the window now. The reality is, as soon as I changed my filters, my life immediately changed. Things started coming to me where before they weren't. And why is that? Well, this is the last four slides. We're getting out of here. I'll get you out of here. Last four slides. And this is a device called a magnetoencephalograph. You've heard of electroencephalographs where you put wires on and you read brain action? Well, the magnetoencephalograph reads the action of the brain but not touching the head. There's a probe above that man's head on the right-hand side, and that probe is called a squid, a super quantum induction device. What does it do? It reads magnetic fields. And what does it reveal? That as you're doing neurological processing, your thoughts are not contained in your head. That your brain waves actually emanate and transmit from your head. Just like atoms and molecules, you're always emitting and absorbing energy. And your thoughts are energy that you send out. It's not mystical or anything like that. It's pretty physical. It's based on a simple rule of physics. It says this, when a current is running through a wire, that if you take your right hand, it's called the rule of the right hand thumb, and it goes like this. If I have the wire and the current is running this way and I take my right hand with my thumb pointing in the direction of the flow and wrap it around the wire, my fingers describe the orientation of a magnetic field around that wire. Nerves are wires. When nerve action goes through the nerves, a magnetic field shown in that orange-yellow circle leaves the head and comes back in again. So basically, your thoughts are broadcast. And now here's the other interesting thing. Now we hook it to this next one, and then all of a sudden you'll see the pertinence of this whole thing. It's like this. The Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox in the brain, the transferred potential. Let me explain the EPR in just a moment. And it goes like this, that particles in fundamental physics come in spins, and they come in pairs, one spinning to the left, one spinning to the right. And it says if you change the spin of one, the other one will instantaneously change its spin to complement it. So the fact is, the one, if I'm spinning left and I'm spinning right, if I take the right one and start spinning it left, then the left one will start spinning right, because they're complementary. Well, the point about it is this. If I move the particles apart and do it here and change them, they'll still change. And if I move them further apart, they still change. It turns out that you can actually take two particles and move them to each side of the universe, change one particle, and the other one will instantly change. It's called action at a distance, entanglement. And the issue about this paper is, it says it's not just a quantum effect. They take two people. They get them to interact with each other. Two people who have never met each other. They get them a chance to hang out, sit down, talk, interact, so they can sort of like bond a little bit. Then they take one of these guys and put them 50 feet away over there in a cage, a wire cage to protect from electromagnetic fields. And they take the other guy and put him in here in a cage, 50, you know, it's 50 feet between the two guys. And they take this guy and flash a light in his eye, which causes what is called an evoked potential. The brain starts to fire with the light flashing. And it turns out, when they get this guy with their shining the light in his eye to, to, to get an evoked potential, simultaneously the other one down there gets the same evoked potential. The point is that the brains are interconnected. That the more bonding that goes on between people, the more interconnected they are. And people who are out here who know have been coupled long enough know frequently that one could have a thought and the other person could respond to it even before you even talked about it. And the reason is this. We are connected by the energy between us. Relevance, the power of prayer. Prayer can be sent to other people and influence their biology. That we can influence health by our belief systems affecting the others around us as well. But that's always wonderful. We always talk about the beautiful nature of the power of prayer. What about the power of hate? The power of hate works the same way. If I hate somebody, I'm connected to them. 
I can't hate somebody I'm not connected to because I don't know them. So I can hate somebody I'm connected to. But the problem is this. Like the power of prayer, unfortunately, instead of sending good news, I start sending bad news. Well, the response is going to also work itself back. Voodoo is sending bad news, the opposite of prayer, sending ill health down this line. What's the relevance? All of us are interconnected. All of our thoughts are not just in our head. Our thoughts are in the field, and they specifically bind to people that we're associated with. So